Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we... Crush? Crush! 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 Crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about how Defense Distributed is bringing their system back online to allow the distribution of 3D printed gun CAD files. The Spartan from LaserMax offers a different approach to weapon-mounted light and laser combos. Available with either a red or green laser, it also takes advantage of the most visible wavelength in the color spectrum and projects 120 lumens of mint green light with just a single AAA battery. Able to be mounted on virtually any pistol with a Picatinny rail, you can own the night by clicking the link in the video description to learn more. In 2013, Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed shocked the world by releasing a CAD file to produce a 3D printed gun called the Liberator. Yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. The file was downloaded over 100,000 times before Cody received a letter from the Department of State. The letter, in part, stated, Defense Distributed should treat the CAD files as ITAR controlled. This means that all such data should be removed from public access immediately. Defense Distributed should also review the remainder of the data made public on its website to determine whether any additional data may be similarly controlled and proceed according to the ITAR requirements. Now, we covered ITAR and its intricacies in a previous video. Simply put, the United States government wasn't too keen on allowing this to continue, probably because they weren't taxing it. Now, rather than simply roll over and pray that the Department of State wouldn't impose massive fines for alleged ITAR violations, Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed struck back. They filed suit against the government with the help of the Second Amendment Foundation, claiming that the government's requirement for approval before publication of files constituted a violation of the First, Second, and Fifth Amendments. Defense Distributed sought a preliminary injunction against the government, which essentially would press pause on the regulation being applied. The district court, as you may have guessed, denied the injunction, and it was appealed to the Fifth Circuit, which resulted in another adverse ruling against the plaintiffs. A petition for certiorari, or petition for the case to be heard by the United States Supreme Court, was ultimately denied earlier this year. So, if you had a hard time following what happened here, the last couple of years were spent appealing in order denying that preliminary injunction. The underlying case itself was not being heard until that issue was resolved. With the case back in district court to be heard on the merits, the Department of State came to a settlement agreement with Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed. As was announced earlier this week, the agreement allows Defense Distributed to publish and distribute the 3D CAD files that led to this whole fiasco in the first place. The Second Amendment Foundation press release stated that under the terms of the settlement, the government has agreed to waive its prior restraint against the plaintiffs, allowing them to freely publish the 3D files and other information at issue. For those that don't know what prior restraint is, it's a term describing government action that prohibits speech or other expression before it can take place. The government has agreed to pay a significant portion of the plaintiff's attorney's fees and return $10,000 in State Department registration dues that were already paid by Defense Distributed. Significantly, the government expressly acknowledges that non-automatic firearms up to 50 caliber, including modern semi-automatic sporting rifles, such as the popular AR-15 and similar firearms, are not inherently military. Take that, Shannon Watts. <laughs> now, there's a couple things to keep in mind here. This is a settlement agreement not a court order, which means that this is only applicable to the parties involved. That means other people or entities could find themselves in a similar position as Cody Wilson did back in 2013. Another point to bear in mind is that the Department of State and Congress are currently in rulemaking to alter the regulations pertaining to ITAR and the EAR, which, if adopted, would make the rules regarding the release of such information less oppressive. Well, I guess that's it for this episode. If you like this video, be sure to help us out and hit that like button and share it around with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed, and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. If you want to get more out of your TGC subscription, be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast, which happens live on Thursday evenings. And as always, thanks for watching.
The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.